Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Chaplain Jeffro's Corner on a Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Taco Tuesday to some. I don't think it'll be that case in my home today. Hardly think that we're going to have tacos today, but uh, I'm not really not in the mood for them on Tuesday. I'm more in the mood for them on the weekend. But Taco Tuesday is what it is, so... God bless you all for being here today. We're going to be talking about a baboon, a donkey, and me. Not me, Balaam. I'll explain that very shortly, who I'm talking about. This is in the uh, book of Numbers, in the chapters, is 22 in Numbers, and verses 21 through 31. The key verse is in Numbers 22, 28. And, of course, why am I not? Why is, what's going on? Okay, there it is. In Proverbs 4, 23, and I didn't put on an add to that on the power verse. Uh, Proverbs 30, 4, 30, 4, 23 and Jude 11. And I'm going to go to Jude 11 very quickly. But in the meantime, while I'm doing that, you are welcome to uh, put a prayer request in Jethro Levy Corner or on here if I happen to catch it. I'll write it down as soon as I see it. But if I don't see it, uh, I can guarantee it's better you go to Jethro Levy Corner. And I think I should have cleared that up yesterday. My wife pointed that out to me very Judiciously, I might add, but uh, she was right. I didn't make that clear, and uh, I'm just telling you all today that you still can put it in the chat right there just so long as I get it. And if I don't get it, make sure that you also put it in Jethro Levy Corner so if in case I miss it, I can catch it there. So glad to have you all here today. And Sherry, I want to ask you about your sister. If you want to put that in the chat, you can. And what's going on with your nephew and uh, how things are going with him. Because I you know, I haven't heard from you in a while and I haven't uh, seen it on there. But maybe you've, maybe you've said something and I just flat missed it. Forgive me if I have. But go ahead and update us on that if you can at some point. Um, I also... Uh, ask you please to pray for Tony. Tony's having a rough time with this rheumatoid right now. This time of year is the hardest on her because she, uh, the cold just bothers her. That's why we should move to Florida, hint, or something warmer. And I have a prayer request list right here in front of me. And I want to make sure that I get over to uh, the power verse first before I do anything else and I haven't done that yet so one main operation here you know Proverbs 4.23 and there we are right there 4.23 see it right in front of me okay uh, on my prayer list I've got the following on here for sick and afflicted downtrodden and broken hearted uh, we need to lift up we the people's family uh, unspoken request uh, we need to go, also pray for Silly for him, and as well as Charlene, uh, unspoken on one, and hospice, uh, his, or, uh, that Charlene's uh, mother's in hospice. Uh, let's continue to lift up our lead guitar man one, that'd be Robert, and uh, Gerald with his uh, recovering from his back surgery. He seems to be doing well from what I'm seeing. I have praise report for Chris. Is better. Uh, took the tube out last night. Thank you for your prayers. Now we got to work on the spiritual side of his health. <laughs> so we're going to keep that going for you, Sherry. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Where did I leave off here? Um, let's see. I said Gerald. Great. Uh, cryptomania. Uh, health concerns. We need to remember cryptomania. Now, that's the way I wrote it down. If it's not right, forgive me. <laughs> just to, 
simple man bringing the message of God. And if I don't get it spelled right, then I'm in trouble. Uh, my wife has asked us to pray for Nicole's daughter. Uh, unspoken request for her. Uh, Tommy Temper's son, who is recovering with his arm, broken arm. And he's probably going to get that cast off here very shortly, I think. I'll have to find out from Tommy when he ever he's on. Get a, uh, get a uh, progress report on his son. But I think he has had that on there for nearly three weeks. If I'm wrong, forgive me. But it won't be no, you Chris, crypto birth. I, I think I did spell it wrong. Pretty close here, uh, Red. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we're talking about the same person, I believe. I, I did write that down wrong. I, I spelled it as it uh, sounded phonetically to me, which is not really the best way to spell. Uh, anyway, let's go back to the prayer list here. Um, we did uh, ask about Sherry's sister. Is there any report on her? I didn't see that. Uh, is thank you for sharing that information. I won't say what it is. We'll just say the C word. She's over it. Let's put it that way. Cheery's sister. Praise the Lord. That's great news. Uh, let's also um, pray for Tom Bale's sister, who is having kidney trouble right now. Let's continue to lift her up to the Lord. Jason, with his uh, unspoken request, it seems like he's doing well right now. Um, well, Archie's daughter. Okay. Um, Archie's daughter. Archie's daughter. I don't recall that, Sherry, but I will rate it in uh, right now just to make sure I have it in there for you. I don't like to miss. I don't like to miss that stuff. It's uh, where's it at here? Uh, right in there. Let me make sure it's. I got that note in there. Let's remember Gator Girl. I need to hear from Aruba Dive Girl or somebody that knows what's going on with Gator Girl. I haven't heard from Gator Girl herself in quite a while, so I'm only hoping things are going well for her. Uh, she did have, a, I believe, a test done last Friday, and uh, certainly will keep her in prayer. Um, let's see. Time Princess and Red Cactus with an unspoken request. And I'm going to leave it right there. Um uh, and I did talk about that already. Um, let's remember my sister-in-law Maggie and my brother-in-law you with their health concerns as well as the Stellarts. Uh, I wrote the same name down twice. I can't believe it did that, but I did. Uh, let's pray for the downtrodden and brokenhearted out there for those who've lost loved ones in the past three years, including the tragedies that have just recently taken place in Turkey, Syria, and Ohio, and other places as well. Oklahoma had a ravaging storm across the United States. We had widespread uh, weather all over the place, including right here in my, in my neck of the woods. We had freezing rain, and it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant to try to walk on that. Um, we uh, also need to remember... Oh, yeah, those who are having cancer treatments like Gene's wife, Captain's friend, and others that are going through those procedures now. Uh, cancer is not the most fun thing to go through, especially if you are in stage four like my mother was. So it's, not, uh, it's a long, drawn-out process, but I think myself that it gets to a point where, you know, your body just can't take it anymore. And uh, you're better off just going home to be with the Lord. I mean, this is what I felt about my mother when she died. She couldn't have lived a quality life with the way her lungs were. 
And I told the Lord of the picture, well, to take her, then take her quietly. And he did. Rather quickly, I might mm -hmm. add. Uh, let's also remember um, the surgeries that are taking place with all the people that have got surgeries upcoming, those that have already had them, and uh, that they recover well. They've got speed completely well. Let's put it that way completely well let's also lift up all all these people that I'm about to talk about with God's protection over them from the dangers that are unseen I think of the families out there that have their sons daughters and cousins and children going to school right now parents going to work and coming back home that God's protection be over them all as well as people who are in transportation and as I speak right now Gary, Ernie, and Bobby are all on the road today. Let's remember them in prayer and all the truck drivers and train operators and uh, airplane operators and cargo ships that bring goods into this country that keeps us sustained in our homes. Let's also remember anybody who is in the health profession right now that God gives them uh, gives them the alertness and the sharpness to do their job to the very best of their ability and I'll tell you this we can't praise these people enough for what they do in these retail stores these people work hard every day there's some yes like anybody else some that you walk in there you wonder if they're having a bad day because they don't sound too happy about being there. And there are others that are joyful and being able to talk to the customers. So let's pray for the ones that's having, maybe having a bad day, that they turn that day around and make it a good day. And uh, ADG says it best. Aruba Diagro says it best. Do a random act of kindness every day. She's right. It should be done every day. It's called... Uh, Loving your fellow person out there. Let's also remember those that are paramedics and their drivers. Let's also remember the utility and municipal workers out there and the road crews that keeps us with the snow clear. Now, sometimes they don't always get out there as quickly as possible. That's because they're doing the same thing. They're battling the same elements up front before we even see it. So... They have a really tough job. Let's remember them in prayer. Uh, let's also remember our farmers out there that go tirelessly in the fields, or dairy farmers or chicken farmers or whatever kind of farmers they are, that make sure that we have food on our tables every day, along with the food producers out there that package up the food so nice and neat that when we go to, when, when we go to get them, they'll be ready for us to eat. Let's also remember our fire police and our military in all branches for what they do to protect us from tyranny. And uh, let's also remember our world, nation, state, and local leaders as they lean on the wise counsel of God as they always should be doing. But sometimes they don't. We, the people, have a will when we vote these people in. That uh, they do God's will and not their own. And I pray, dear Lord, uh, I also ask you to pray and lift up the unspoken requests out there that are being offered when we start to speak in prayer. May God grant those prayers according to His will. Let's also remember our missionaries, both foreign and domestic, in all four corners of the world, bringing the Word of God wherever they are in the remotest of areas. So let's remember them. Uh, also, anybody who's doing an outreach ministry like this one and many others like it. Praise the Lord that, he us the, that the Lord gives us the opportunity to do these things. Because when I discovered it, I couldn't believe that there's so, many, so few people doing it. Now we got many, and that's good. The word's getting out there. Let's also remember the churches. Whenever the doors are open, 
that people come into the church expecting to hear the Word of God and everything about it, from the pastor all the way down to the nursery worker, Powering off. bringing the message to the people. Let's also remember, not only just our churches, but let's remember the messenger as well as the message. And let's remember to pray for world peace. Let these nations come together, sign an agreement, walk away, shake hands, smile, and be friends. We'd have a much better world if that took place. And also, we pray for somebody who is seeking the salvation of the Lord D. And I pray today that one person comes forward and asks Jesus into their heart today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you. I know this is a long prayer list, but you know, dear Lord, it's necessary that we pray for everyone. We lift up and pray for the following as sick and afflicted, downtrodden, and brokenhearted. We lift up we the people's family. It's an unspoken request. You know what's going on here, dear Lord. Help them to overcome whatever it is they're going through. I pray also for silly for him for the same thing, an unspoken request. Whatever's going on there, I pray that everything's fine. I pray also today, dear Lord, for uh, Shirlene, who has her mother in hospice. It could be a matter of time. And uh, let's lift up Shirlene today, dear Lord. Put your hand upon her and give her comfort and peace at a most difficult time, but yet and still we lift her up. We pray also for Robert, lead guitar man one, with his health concerns. We lift up Gerald, who is recovering from his back surgery, and he looks like he's doing well, and we praise you for that. We also lift up uh, crypto. I got it down as crypto mania, but it might be wrong. But dear Lord, you know who it is. I pray, dear Lord, that you be with this person with their health concerns. Let's also lift up Nicole's daughter uh, for an unspoken request. There's something going on there too, dear Lord, that uh, requires your attention. So I pray, dear Lord, that you have your hand upon that situation. I also lift up Tommy Temper's son, who is recovering with his broken arm. I pray that everything's going well for him, and in a very short time, he'll get that cast off. We thank you for the ability for the doctors and the anesthesiologists and all who are involved in his case to get his arm back and healthy again. I pray, dear Lord, today that you also be with ADG's um, daughter, her friend Robert, as well as her brother, who is in a facility right now, recovered uh, from what he recovered from. And I pray, dear Lord, also that he also has uh, a healing in his spiritual life as well. I pray for Sherry's sister and nephew, as well as uh, Archie's daughter-in-law. I think it's Archie's daughter-in-law. Lord, if I'm wrong about that, please forgive me. But she knows who she wanted me to pray for. And I pray today, dear Lord, that you have your hand upon all these situations. The praise goes to what's happened with her sister and with her nephew. All recovering from what they went through. I pray, dear Lord, you'll also be with uh, Archie's uh, daughter-in-law or daughter. I pray, dear Lord, also that you be with Tom Bale's sister who's going through kidney trouble, have your hand upon her, and may they find a way to find her a new kidney or whatever they got to do to make her well. May it be done with God's speed. Let's lift up uh, Jason with his unspoken request, Joshua with his health concerns, and Gator Girl waiting for a result. For Italian Princess as well as Red Cactus, just an unspoken request. Grant that request according to your will. I pray, dear Lord, for Maggie and you with their health concerns, that you have your hand upon them as well as the Stallers going 
through some health concerns of their own. I pray today, dear Lord, that you be with the downtrodden and the brokenhearted. I think of so many people and have lost what loved ones during this last three years and just recently in Turkey and Syria, as well as Ohio and other places around the country and around the world. That you have your hand upon those that are grieving right now. Give them peace and comfort at this time. And may they may you help them to endure. I pray also, dear Lord, for those that are going through cancer treatments right now. I think of Jean's wife, uh, Captain's friend, that's going through that right now, having to talk to the family about the prognosis and diagnosis and and plan of treatment. So I pray, dear Lord, you be with her and her husband. May God's protection be over the following. Families that are out there today and going around about to and fro from home to work to school and back. Protect them from the dangers that are unseen as well as all our transportation people out there like Gary, Bobby, and Ernie and many others that are driving a semi somewhere in this country delivering this or that or the other thing to make sure that we have what we need in our homes as well as our businesses and workplaces. Thank you, dear Lord, for all of them that, that uh, operate a mode of transportation, whether it be a truck, train, plane, or boat, cargo boat, or even a small delivery truck. I pray also, dear Lord, that you li that we lift up to you our health professionals out there to keep them alert and attentive to the needs of those who they whom they are caring for at this time, and have your hand upon them to protect them from the dangers that are unseen as well. Let's also lift up the paramedics and their, and their drivers, as well as our utility and municipal workers that keeps us going every day in our homes, businesses, and places of work. I pray also, dear Lord, for our farmers out there, for the work that they do, all different kinds of farmers out there, produce farmers, dairy farmers, pig farmers, chicken farmers, whatever they're doing, as well as the food producers, protect them from the dangers that are unseen, as well as our road crews out there that keeps us protected every day when they go out and scrape the roads and make sure they have a clear path that we can drive on to get to wherever we got to go. I pray, dear Lord, today also for our fire police as well as our military. Have your hand upon them today, dear Lord, and protect them from the dangers that are unseen as well for what they do to protect us and keep us safe. I lift up and pray, dear Lord, to you for the world, nation, state, and local leaders who should be leaning on the wise counsel of God and doing by the will of the people who elected them. That they lean to the wise counsel of God not only for wisdom, but for instruction to do that which affects us all by the word of God, that they listen to God in everything they do. They, some of them don't. That's who we're praying for right now. That those that don't and those that do, keep them strong, dear Lord, to do your will. I pray also today, dear Lord, for all of the unspoken requests that are being offered before you at this time. I pray, dear Lord, you grant each and every request according to your will today. That you also be with our missionaries out there on all four corners of the world. Bringing the word of God wherever they are in this globe. The word needs to be spread. We all need to be doing it. So I pray, dear Lord, today that you not only be with them, but you be with the outreach ministries like this one right here and others like it. That bring the word of God to people maybe not able to get out but they have a computer or some device that they can listen to this. So I thank you, dear Lord, for this ministry. I thank you for blessing this ministry. It has grown. I thank you, dear Lord, for showing me the way and for bless, bless these people out there that are really helping this ministry out. I can't thank them enough, but I thank you more, dear Lord, for working through them. I also pray, dear Lord, today, 
that you be with all of our churches out there. That bring the message every time the doors are open, from the pastor all the way down to the nursery worker, that people go into the church and become more enriched with it when they come out than when they went in. And the same goes here. I pray also, dear Lord, for the messenger as well as the message itself. And I pray, dear Lord, also that you be with, a, with this world, that they settle their differences, come to a place of world peace, shake hands, and be friends. I pray for those that are seeking the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. I'm writing that down right now. I just saw it as I looked up. Uh, just as I got done praying, you say it's Hannah Bell. I got that right. If I'm wrong, just give me a, you know, contact me on Jethro Levy Corner. If there's anything I got wrong, let me know, <laughs> please, as I don't want to get it wrong. I really don't. But she's going through cancer treatments, okay. And they had to include her with uh, Captain's friends. Uh, friend Glenn and his wife. So I'm going to make sure I get that in there. And uh, we're going to talk about a baboon, a donkey, and me. Not really me, but that's the title of the message today. I'm going to go into the uh, power verses first. In Proverbs 4.23, it says, Keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Meaning, keep your eyes on the Lord and do his will. That's what that's saying right there. Keep yourself sharp and in the word of God, always trying to find a way to please the Lord every way we can. And I'm going to go to Jude 11 real quick. Jude 11 is just a, one verse, it says, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and I and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Now, the reason why I mentioned that last one is because we need to pay attention to what the Lord tells us in his will. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for being here. I name you by name, but we got to get going because I've been pretty long in that prayer. And I'm going to go to Numbers 21 through 31, speaking from the King James Version, as I always do when I'm on here, as I always will when I'm on here, because that's the version I learned from, went to school for, and everything, among other things. It's just a simple preference that I have. And it says in verse 21, And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass. Now I'm going to speak verbatim now, so don't get offended by that word. And went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. This is a really powerful story. And now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass, listen to this, saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and the sword drawn in his hand, and the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass, striking him, to turn him into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. And he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in the narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. Verse 27. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled. And he smote the ass with the staff. And the Lord opened 
the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, listen to this real close. Listen to this real close. What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, and for now I would kill thee. Verse 30. And the ass said unto Balaam, I am not thine ass, not thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden over ever since I was thine unto this day. Was I ever wont to do so un, uh, unto thee? And he said, Nay. And the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword, sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. He didn't have his eyes open, but the donkey did and tried to tell him that. And when he finally got his eyes open and saw what was going on, he acted accordingly as I would have. I would have fallen on my face and fell flat. Jack knew how to put trains on the right track. In nine years of work, he never missed a track switch as locomotives drew near to on Tuhage, South Africa, station, indicating by their whistles the direction they were to go. Jack was a Chakama baboon. He was he was carried, carried, he was carried for by the railway uh, signalman James Wild, or Wide, pardon me, James Wide, and Jack in turn took care of James. Wide had both his legs in a fall between moving cars. He trained Jack to help him with the tasks around the house, and soon Jack assisted him at work also, learning how to respond to the incoming train signals by pulling corresponding levers for their tracks. That's one smart baboon. The Bible tells of another animal who helped someone in a surprising way, Balaam's donkey. Balaam was a pagan prophet serving a king who intended to harm Israel. As the prophet was riding his donkey en route to assist the king, the Lord opened up the donkey's mouth and spoke to Balaam, as it says in Numbers 22:28. The donkey's speech was part of the way God opened Balaam's eyes in verse 31, warned him of imminent danger and kept him from harming his people. A railway baboon, a talking donkey, why not? If God can use these amazing animals for good purposes, it's not at all far-fetched to believe that he can use you and me as well. Looking at him, seeking his strength, we can accomplish more than ever than we ever thought possible. Now, I will say verse uh, 137 from Luke. I've repeated that several times on here. For with God, nothing is impossible. So believe that he can. If you doubt him, then you won't receive that that comes from the Lord if you doubt him. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. In today's insight, the book of Numbers records the mercenary exploits of Balaam and how God hijacked his plan to curse his people. Though another Balaam devised strategy, however, the children of Israel were led astray, caused to sin. Three times in the New Testament, Balaam's waywardness and the consequences thereof are used to warn and divert believers in Jesus from unrighteousness. Second Peter 2.15 speaks of the way, the way of Balaam, who loved the wages of wickedness. Jude 11 knows, notes 
part of Jude 11, which we read, notes that Balaam's error in Revelation 2.14 warns of the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin. That's the problem. Temptation and sin. We are prone to go after one another instead of loving one another. And it's just not proper. If we are to follow the word of God and we are to follow God's will, then we need to treat each other with respect and love to honor him that made us. That's the fact, that's the fact I'll never, ever leave out of my mind. And I will tell you that it's tough to live in this world with all of these things around us and how we treat each other. People's feelings can be hurt so, so very easily. And let me tell you, I make it a matter of prayer that God shows me the way before I start my day. Shows me the way before I start my message. Shows me the way after I finish my message that comes from him. He's talking through me right now. It's good to know that I have a God that's willing to do that with me and, and work through me to make this all happen. I could not try or even begin to try to do it without him. If I did, my words would be all over the place. Trying to stay in perspective of the word of God is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Because you can be distracted. You can be told you know, that you're wrong about this. I would rather have people tell me in a panel that I'm wrong about something. Or in when, when uh, they personally message me outside of the message and rather than doing while I'm doing so. And I will not, I promise you, call anybody out when they're doing something wrong in the chat by name. Normally I don't do that. I'll just ask you, you know, please. But the reason why I'm mentioning that today is that we need to treat each other with absolute kindness and respects for not only not only for, from each other, but God grieves when we are at each other's throats all the time. It just doesn't solve nothing. I want you to know, from this chair and in my heart, even though I may not know you personally, I want you to know, because God loves you, then so do we. I say that every day. Now, the questions I have for you today is a simple it's a simple question. Have you seen God use you unexpectedly? That's a good question. I can point to the beginning. When I started doing messages in the nursing home, an older man by the name of uh trying to think of his name right now. My mind's drawing a blank. But he grabbed me by the hand. He told me, get up there and bring a message. Ray. Ray, that was his name. Ray grabbed me by the hand and said, get up there and preach. I never have done that in my life up to that point. I was a teenager. I can't do this. I've never publicly spoke before. And when I do, I break out in a terrible sweat. So I went up there, and the only thing I can think of, and I talked about that yesterday a little bit, grab a daily bread and, and, and read through that. And that's how this whole thing got started. So, yeah, he grabbed a hold of me, unexpectedly says, well, if you're not going to go to seminary and learn to be a pastor, at least get up there and bring this word to the people. I fashioned myself after Jonah, refusing to do what God asked me to do in the first place, bring his word. I'm not the most articulate speaker in the world, but I sure do love the Lord, and that's a fact. Now, what's the second question? 
What will you do to make yourself available to him, to him today? By telling the Lord wherever you need me to be, however you need to use me, in any way you can, do it. Do it. My soul belongs to you. And that's a fact. So thank you all for being here today with me as I brought the message today. If you have a prayer request upon your heart, may you do so at the time when we start the prayer. And may God grant each and every request that is brought before him according to his will. If you are here and you have fallen out of favor with God in some way, well, I'll tell you what, you got an opportunity to, to rectify that today too. By simply telling the Lord you're sorry for what you've done, that got you away from God, it will set you back on that road that leads right to heaven's door, right that narrow path that leads right to heaven's door. And he will open that door and say to you, Enter thy kind and faithful servant. Those are the words you want to hear. You don't want to hear, Depart from me, I never knew you. So with that being said, if you are here, and you've never experienced or ever known to ask the Lord to come into your heart and become your personal Savior. Your opportunity is right here, right now. Don't let it pass you by. Because the Bible talks about the time when the Lord will return. Not the second coming, but when he comes in the rapture. The catching up of the souls. He will be in the clouds waiting for us to come up. First the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we after that. That time could be any time. See, the tribulation period hasn't really begun yet. Some think it, some do think it has, but it really hasn't. If you look at uh, Matthew 24, Luke 21, and uh, also uh, Revelation 13, 16 through the rest of the chapter, you're going to know this hasn't happened yet by reading that. So be ready. Today could be that day. And if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you will get left behind. If you haven't done so, I'm not trying to scare you, but it's just a fact what the Bible says about that. We're going to go over that someday here in the near future. But in the meantime, May I say to you, we need to go to the Lord in prayer to conclude this message. And I got something I want to give you at the end of this. If you want any of these things I have that I'm going to send to those who have accepted Christ or those who already have, wait and see what I'm going to tell you after I'm done here. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you again for today. We want to serve you. To use our hands, our feet, our mouth, and whatever you desire of us. Help us to live for you today. Not for just for ourselves. But live for you today. I pray, dear Lord, right now. If there's someone that has fallen out of favor with you, let them pick themselves up. Come to you and ask for forgiveness. And that you set them on the road to righteousness with the power of the Holy Spirit as you see fit all the days of their lives. Until they come to the door of heaven and then you open it up, dear Lord, and say, enter thy kind and faithful servant. We pray today, dear Lord, that there's someone out there today, and I really hope there is one out there today that wants to receive Christ as their personal Savior to take the sins from them. Cast them in the sea of forgiveness as far as east from the west. The Bible says in 1 John 1 9, You are just and able to forgive all sin and forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As you take ourselves, as we take ourselves to you, those of us who are seeking the salvation of the Lord, to come into our hearts, minds, and souls as our personal Savior. 
and by the power of the Holy Spirit guiding us. Till the day we die or till the day we're called home. To seek the crowns and rewards that are waiting for us at the gates of pearl and the streets of clear glass glow by saying this prayer. Dear Father God, I come before thee and confess unto you that I am a sinner. I deserve the punishment for my sins. I am not worthy to be accepted by you, but yet you died on the cross. Rose again on the third day. Met with your disciples and ascended into heaven to show us the way to eternal life. And because you did that, you did that for the sins of all of mankind. So I ask, dear Lord, that you come into my heart and become my personal Savior. Forgive me for all the sins I committed from the time I was born to the present day. To no longer do them and totally repent of them. As you take these sins from us and cast them in the sea of forgiveness, come into our hearts, minds, and souls. With the power of the Holy Spirit guiding us each and every day of our lives as you see fit until you call us home to be with you in heaven, to seek the crowns and rewards that are waiting for us there at the gates of pearl and the streets of clear glass gold. Again, dear Lord, thank you for being that sacrificial lamb, dying on the cross, being buried in the tomb, rising again on the third day, meeting with Mary Magdalene and the disciples, and ascending into heaven to go to prepare a place for all of us. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray, and all that God's people said, Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please get a hold of me here at Chaplain Jethro's Corner. Go to uh, Chaplain Jethro at Chaplain J55 on Twitter. If you feel comfortable going there, leave me your email address. Go to Twitch, Getter, and True Social under the name of Chaplain Jethro55. Leave your email address there. Go to Jethro Lee B. Period Corner and leave it there as well. Or go to Chaplain Jethro's Corner number one at Outlook.com. Now here's where it changes a little bit. In five to ten days upon receiving these materials that I'm about to send you, there will be a tracking number on that to make sure you get it. Now, what am I sending you? I'm sending you God's Bridge to Eternal Life, Seven Great Wonderful Steps, it leads you on your way to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and getting you on that road that leads right to his door. Mm-hmm. I also have a Bible reading schedule, which you can read the Bible every day, Old and New Testament readings from the Bible. And might I suggest a King James Bible in large or extra large print. In case you're visually challenged like me, it, believe me, it's worth it to get one. And I'll tell you this. If you go to a Christian bookstore, you'll find one. If not, and you're not close to one, then ChristianBookstore.com is your is a place to go. There are other sites as well, but that's the one I think is the better one. Because it has all kinds of different things you can get there. But the Bibles are numerous here. And you can get them in a prophecy Bible right there. I would recommend that. Because you need to know what prophecy is telling you in the Word. And that's why I recommend it so highly. You can also go to jvm.org, which is Jack Van Epi Ministries.org, and get one there. If you wanted to go that route. You can also go to LeeGreenwood.com and get one there as well in large print. So, with that being said, I will also send you our daily bread. We got the new ones in. If you want it ahead of time, just drop me a line right there in Jephthah Levy Corner and I'll get to you. Or Chaplain Jephthah's Corner number one at Outlook.com. What's in here? Large print reading. Very easy on the eyes. 
Not only that, but it's got a Bible reading schedule in here too. Now we just heard from James Banks today. We heard from several other people in past days like um, Tim Gustafson and uh, Patricia Rabun, Lisa M. Samra, and of course Martin DeHaan who invented the Grand Rapids Press that brings these things out every quarter. And we are thankful for them. Well, Billy, you got to find the right Christian bookstore. So you need to shop around. I mean, ChristianBookstore.com is the online site, but there are uh, places like uh, Zondervan is uh, pretty universal out there. And uh, I think there's a few others out there that are like that. But uh, you just got to shop around. I mean, they, they, there's all kinds of places you can go to get a good Christian Bible. So, yeah, it is corrupt. It, it's too bad that people got to uh, corrupt the Word of God. There are a lot of Word of Faith prosperity preachers out there that do that every, every single day out there. And they drive me crazy. Oh, if you give me $300, you'll get this. You know, no, I don't ask for donations here. The only donations I ask for on here is give me a like today. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that. And you're welcome to share. Share it out wherever you are. And make sure you do another thing. When you subscribe, be sure to tell other people about it. As I'll tell you, it's it's really great to have you all here. It wouldn't be a ministry without you. I mean, I'm just one person bringing the Word of God. It's, uh, he has told me to do Do I do it perfectly? Not all the time. I do make mistakes. I am not an articulate man with speech. I do the best with what God gave me. So use your mouth for something other than just a just to say things, speak the truth that comes from all all of God's word in every way, shape, and form. So I thank you all for being here. Now Christians, I say this to you every day, but new Christians, before these materials come to you, read the book of John. It's for new Christians. Read the book of John so you know what Christ did while he was here on earth. Read the book of Psalms so you can know how to praise, honor, and worship the Lord in song and in praise as well as in prayer and supplication. And then go to the book of Proverbs and learn of God's wisdom. And when you get those materials, start on the day you get them, wherever you're at in the Bible reading schedule, and start that day. And if you want to back read back to January, you can do that too. But use the daily bread and the Bible reading schedule coinciding with one another. You'll get through the Bible a lot quicker that way. So with that being said, God bless you all for being here. Thank you for coming. And we will see you next time on here. Remember, if Christ is living in you today, and that light is so shining within you, just like a light of candle in a lampstand, defeats the utter darkness of sin and debauchery wherever it is. Light defeats darkness. That's a fact. And remember this. The labors are few. The harvest is a plenty. We need more people out there. Spreading the word of God wherever we go. Now, I will ask you one other thing. In Numbers 6, 24 through 26 says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And the Lord lift his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And man, I know don't know anybody that doesn't love peace. But you gotta ask for it. That's important. So if the rapture were to occur, I will tell you. <laughs> if the rapture were to occur, we will see each other in heaven. Otherwise, we'll be here tomorrow afternoon, God willing. At 5 o'clock, bringing you another message from our daily bread. And I'm going to be talking. I had a deal, no, ahead of time. 
This is what I'm going to be talking on. And by the way, before I go, tentatively, the date is March 11th. We're going to have a panel on here, and I would love to have you all come on here. Now, I can only have six at a time, but you're welcome to be in chat. And if somebody wants to come in into the panel and talk or ask questions, let's do it. And if you have a topic of discussion that you want to talk about regarding the Bible, let me know ahead of time. We may pick one of them. We will have a period of open discussion after we go through the topic. So we'll see. Just uh, let me know. Yeah, it's true. Pat Robertson is, uh, let me tell you something about him. For I know I'm going long here, but he suggested, this is not, not nothing I've, I'm making, I'm not making any of this up. He suggested that a man who had a wife who was terminally ill, that it'd be all right for him to divorce his wife and marry another. And I about went crazy. I says, where does it say that in the Bible? It said, when God puts together, don't let no man put asunder or separate. That's what it says. And I thought to myself, what's he trying to do? I think at that point in time, well, he probably did it before that for all I know. I, there's other things he said too, but I'm just pointing to that one where he lost his credibility with a lot of people, not just me. Uh, there's several Word of Faith prosperity preachers out there. I won't go through every one of them today, but I'll tell you, mm -hmm. be careful what you see on the TV. That's a word uh, that's just, far as I'm going to take that one. Go to church. Find you a good church home that goes by the doctrine of the Bible that people come to you like Christ is really living in them and they reach out to you and treat you like Christ would treat you. That's when you know you're in the right church. And I'm going to tell you, the church we're going to right now has that going for them. Uh, the date for the panel is on the 11th, tentatively speaking. This could change. I have no idea what's happening in the future, so I'm giving it a little bit of a tentative uh, announcement, but I will let you know, oh, probably around the 13th. I don't know for sure then. But uh, And then again, by being what it is, you never know. I mean, it could, something could come up. So let's just hope that nothing does and we can have that panel. All right? Anyway, we'll talk to you later. God bless you for being here. And remember, as always, I say this on here, that God loves you. And so do we right here at Chaplain Jeff Lowe's Corner. God bless you all. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And we'll see you next time. God bless you all.